Hello and welcome to this Revit tutorial on tips and tricks for using reference planes on family creations. In this video, I'll show you how to create and use reference planes in Revit families, which will help you to create more complex and flexible families. First, let's define what reference planes are. Reference planes are 2D planes that are used as a guide to create geometry and to control the placement and orientation of objects in a Revit family. Reference planes are usually used to create families that are parametric, meaning that they could be adjusted by the user to fit different situations. And on this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a parametric cube where its dimensions will be able to be modified. First, I'll open Revit 2023, click on New Family, English Imperial, then head down to Generic Model and Open. I'll start off with the reference planes. We'll click on the reference plane or type in RP as the keyboard shortcut. I'll begin by placing the reference planes. Remember, I'm showing you how to create a cube. So this cube has different faces and that's my thinking process for this cube family to create reference planes for each face because I'm going to want to modify the width, depth and height. By clicking on the reference plane here, I'll click on this left plane and heading to the properties tab, we'll see that there are different options and I could rename this reference plane to better organize it and I'll change its category also to left. But do keep in mind that there are other categories that these reference planes could be assigned to such as weak, strong or not a reference. Here what I'm doing is just continuing to rename and change the categories for the front, back, and right reference planes. Also note that there are reference planes that were already preset and that they're already named and they are set as the origin planes. Now switching to the front view, I'm going to select this plane and categorize it to the center elevation and rename it. As well as the top reference and do the same. I'll rename and then apply. So now back to the plan view and having all the reference planes set up and renamed, we want to go to annotate, align and begin to apply the dimensions or hit the I for the shortcut. By starting with the left side, then dragging to the center, clicking and dragging to the right, I'm creating this dual dimension line where I'll get this option with the EQ and a slash through it. I'll click it and both of these dimension lines become equal and they're equal based on their overall dimension. I'll continue to do the same for each of them, including the height on the front view. So now I'm going to want to head back to the reference level and our reference planes have all been placed, named and categorized. The next step is to create the parameters that are going to control the width, depth, and height of our cube. So I'll go to the properties on the create tab, click family type, and the family type window pops up. Here I'll create all three parameters. I'll start off by going to the bottom of the window and clicking on the new parameter button. And begin with width. I will get into the parameter properties and its options here because that's going to be for another video. But if you are enjoying this video and would like to get notifications when Fetch posts similar videos like this, click that subscribe button and don't forget to like. Now I'll go ahead and create the next two, depth and height. Once they are created, I'll rearrange these parameters. I'll first start off with the width and change this to 4 feet and I'll do the same for the other two and since it is a cube I'll keep the 4 feet throughout. Now I click on this dimension, head to the ribbon and to label and click the drop down. I'll assign this dimension to width and do the same for the depth and height.
Now that all parameters have been assigned, I'm finally ready to create the actual geometry that will be controlled by the reference planes and parameters I just created. So I'll head to the create forms and click on extrusion and select a pick line. So I'll tell it to create a line from the reference planes I created already and check the lock. So the lines are automatically locked down to the reference planes as well. If you don't lock your lines or faces to the reference planes, then the extrusions you're creating won't be able to be modified when you begin to alter the parameter dimensions. After I create the lock lines, I want to connect all sides to close the loop. And I could do so by typing in TR or clicking the trim extend to corner button on the top ribbon. Now, for example, here on the 3D view, I'm dragging the bottom surface up and the top surface down, and I could do so freely. But when I try to do this on the left side, I get an error message regarding the constraints from Revit because this side is already locked down to a reference plane, so it's warning us. I didn't get this error message earlier on the top and bottom because I haven't aligned and locked that surface to the reference planes. So for the height, we want to lock it down as well by aligning, hitting AL4 at the shortcut, and locking them down. I'll do the same for the top, but I'll purposely leave it unlocked. Now back to the 3D view, and by zooming out a bit, you could see the cube. To modify and flex this family, I'm going to head back to the type properties, and I'll change the width to 2 feet and the depth to 6 feet. I'll leave the height alone. Click OK. So now once we apply, we see that the width and the depth have changed. So this cube is no longer a cube. Now going back, I'm going to bring the height up to 10 feet and hit OK. But we do see how the extrusion remained the same height, even though I did modify the height parameter. And we see so on the front view. The reference plane got taller and so did the dimension. So to fix this, we just want to align the top of the extrusion to the reference plane. So I'll hit the AL on my keyboard and align and lock. I'll return to the 3D and we see that the shape did get taller. I will once again modify the dimension on the type property and change everything to 5 feet. Then hit OK to bring back the cube. That's it for this tutorial. I hope these tips and tricks were helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. So head on over to our Fetch website or download the Fetch app straight to your computer. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.